before I jump into all the details of us missing our flight and the whole fiasco of the airport in America, I did want to tell you some of the things about the flight itself. So I haven't really told you any of these details up to this point in the series, but I really did want to stop and take this opportunity to tell you about some of these things. So on the plane itself, they actually made an announcement about people praying, which flying in America, you never hear that. But going to Israel, they actually made a point to comment on praying and they asked that people that pray would, you know, keep to themselves. They could stand up, but that they not just, you know, stand in the middle of the aisles and block the aisles or um, leave their seat basically or stand somewhere else and that uh, they would just be considerate of people. And that was so interesting to see because actually if you were dozing or, or you know, woke up during the flight at some point, um, you would look around the plane and you would see these um, religious Orthodox Jews standing up. They would be um, wrapping their arms with uh, phylacteries and they would be, you know, putting it on just right. And then they would hold it in their hand, you know, wrap it around their hand a few times and hold it. They would have the phylactery up on their, their head normally. And then they would be wearing, you know, a prayer shawl. Some of them would be actually reading um, probably the um, secular Jewish writings, probably not the Torah, but it was probably the Talmud. And uh, a lot of them would be reading that. They would have uh, their heads covered, you know, and they would be normally rocking back and forth praying. But it was very interesting to see. You could you could see a little glimpse, you know, just looking throughout the plane. If you look around, one, one time I got up to go get coffee in the back um, and I just stepped out into the aisle and I had to brush past one of the guys that was actually standing up praying on that side of the plane. So very interesting um, that I haven't gotten to mention that until now. The, the Jews were very devoted to prayer. Um, you could kind of watch their whole prayer process um, and how they would do that. It's actually very sad, you know, a lot of them just sitting there reciting scripture and praying. Very interesting sight to see. So that's something you might see on the flight there and back. Um, you know, that's just part of the Jews and, and their religion. And um, very interesting. Also on the plane, they do provide you with a blanket. I think you may have seen from some of the clips that I've thrown in here and there, but they provide you with a blanket and a pillow. And they'll also give you, they'll be so kind as to give you these little earbuds um, so you can listen to the TV thing. So I'll probably keep these and use these for concrete work later. But um, very interesting. So the flight, they give you a pillow blanket. That's very nice. Um, they give you a lot of food. They serve like a, depending on the time that you fly, I think it's normally two meals. So like a breakfast kind of thing, which mm, the food's a little different. The fruit was good. And then they'll give you like a dinner kind of thing, which is, you know, not the best food, but it's something that you can eat. And then they go through, give you drinks and snacks and stuff. And those are normally really, really good. So some of the just the things here and there about the flight. Like I mentioned before, if you actually get up and walk back to the back, they kind of serve snacks continuously, unless there's turbulence or, you know, rough air. So you can get up and actually go back and check it out. <coughs> Excuse me. You can go back there to the back of the plane and uh, you can ask them to serve you something as long as it's safe for you to move about the cabin. So the flights were pretty nice, pretty enjoyable. Um, they give you sleeping masks if you ask for one. Um, and then the two meals, as I said, the beginning meal is a little heavier and then normally there's like a lighter meal at the end. So that's kind of the flight from Israel. Um, now, once you land in America, if you're like us, you sit on the tarmac for like an hour. Okay. Now, it wasn't anyone's fault, really. It was because there was bad weather when we first landed. There was like a snowstorm or something. I don't know. And when we landed in JFK in America, in New York, um, we got there and we couldn't get off the plane for like an hour. Now, remember, we were late taking off because the boarding process went took so long. And so we, we boarded the plane late, took off late. We made up a little bit of that time coming back, the flight went a little faster 
So we, we landed closer to when we were scheduled to land. So we almost got back that layover time uh, for us to go through customs and, and do everything you have to do when you first hit the states coming from another country. But then we sat on the tarmac for an hour. So then our little window of time to go through customs and everything was back down to one hour. Okay, so we landed, I think it was at, or not landed, but we got off the plane, I think it was at 7.30, and I'm pretty sure our flight took off at like 8.30. So, yeah, it didn't give us much time at all. So, it was a blur, to say the least. I was mainly just bitter, because I actually got to the gate on time, and I told them that the rest of my family was coming, and they did not wait for us. So that was tough. That was very sad. But uh, the whole process is just a blur, okay? So I'm going to tell you the, the highlights that I remember. I was trying to process it while we were there, trying to figure out what we're supposed to do as a family. This is kind of new for all of us. And at the same time, we're rushing to try to not miss our flight because we're getting updates on our phone that our luggage is on the flight. And so now we're going to be losing our luggage and everything. So that was exciting. So anyways, from what I remember, there's three, uh, basically three steps Okay, once you hit the United States, you got to do these three steps before you can board your connecting flight to go home. Okay, so let me just read this because I typed this up and I barely remembered what happened when I was typing this, which is like at the moment. So there's basically three steps. Go through passport control, claim your luggage, and then go through security. Okay, but it was a blur because we did it all in like 30 minutes and... The flights at this point had been a mess. Um, one couple got told in Tel Aviv in line that their flight had been rebooked. Another group, uh, or another in our group, got a flight change on the flight. Okay, so while they're on the flight, they figured out that their connecting flight was no longer the same flight. And then I don't think they found out until they were getting off the plane because they thought they had plenty of time for their layover. They ended up in the same boat, similar boat to us. Anyways, it was a mess. We noticed that our flight was canceled when we got our boarding passes. So that was back in Israel the first night we were, you know, before we were even on our first plane, we noticed that our flights had been canceled and rebooked. Um, and they told us that would be enough time to go through customs and everything, which they were right, to give them credit. If we hadn't sat on the tarmac, tarmac for like an hour, we would have made it. So they, they knew their stuff. But, uh, yeah, so they rebooked us. Another couple had their flight canceled right when they got off the plane. So a lot of people in our group, uh, it was just a mess. So then we sat on the tarmac for about an hour and we missed our flight as well as another couple and two other couples experienced longer layovers. So one went to another airport. They just packed up their stuff, got a taxi and went to Newark, I think it was. Um, so the other group that missed their flight got rescheduled to fly from JFK to Washington, D.C., to Atlanta, then to St. Louis. So I hope they made it home because that's a lot of changes. So the three steps, like I said, that's just to tell you what we went through and what a lot of people in our group went through. So plan for the unexpected and uh, expect chaos. No, but if everything goes smoothly, if there's no weather-related crisis crises, I don't know, fiascos, then uh, these are the three steps that you can expect. Number one, passport control and customs. Okay, so U.S. citizens, okay, so there's two lines. There's the U.S. citizen line or the mobile passport line. So if you're just a U.S. citizen, you get in one line, and if you have a mobile passport on your phone, you can get into another line. That's what I'm going to take from that. Then once you get there, you're going to declare anything if you have anything to declare actually if you do the mobile passport you don't have to even answer that question because you'll answer it on your phone before you get up to that point in line then baggage claim from what i remember we picked up our luggage in jfk and went through customs then we exited and put our bags on another conveyor belt. I'm sorry, I wish I knew more that I could tell you, but this is what I have typed on my phone, and uh, that's all I got. So, 
yeah, you go through passport control and customs. So basically, you get off the plane, you're in the airport, you get in line if you're a U.S. citizen or if you have the, the mobile passport. You go through that, declare anything. Then, once you get through that, you're going to go to the baggage claim, just like you would if you were leaving the airport. You pick up your luggage. You have to look for it, obviously. Then you get it. You go through customs. Then you put it on another conveyor belt. And at that point, the people there were telling us, what, what flight do you have? And we told them, they're like, eh, you're probably not going to make it. And they were right. Um, so that we put it there anyways. They let us run and try. They were like, go up four flights of stairs, go through security, go find your gate. So we went up to like the fourth level. This is a big airport, by the way. We go up, um, up the stairs. We went through security, which took a long time. There was a lot of slower people in front of us and just dragging. And it, oh, we were counting the minutes and we were just sweating. And we were like, ah. Oh. And then we were all getting patted down. And then I had to empty my entire backpack, which, by the way, had all this filming stuff. I mean, everything up on this shelf up here it had in my backpack and they had me take it all out and unzip everything so thankfully i was the first one in line in security from our family because i was the last one out of security because they were checking everything in my bag anyways we went through security we went to the gate so we knew what our gate was i kind of left the rest of the family i gave one of my my carry-on to my brother i think it was and i ran just sprinted through the airport so yeah i was that guy sprinting full speed through the airport got to the gate and uh told them that that my family was coming and they said well i don't see anybody and i was like well yeah they're gonna be a minute because you know i ran to get here i was like it's gonna be you know maybe three four five minutes and they said basically they're like yeah well if they're not here in one minute then we're gonna have to close the door on on the plane and actually my family got there it was probably like five or seven minutes later um, from when I got there, I was just standing there waiting for them, but they all got there and the plane, it wasn't, it was actually before the time that the plane was supposed to take off. So it was still, obviously they have to close the door before the plane takes off. Um, but it was before the time that the plane was scheduled to take off. So that's, ah, that was a bummer. But one of the ladies was nice and uh, she was kind enough to take us over to another kiosk and she got us rebooked on a flight that was going to be at like five o'clock that night. So at least it's the same day. We didn't have to stay overnight. We were just going to catch up to our luggage once we got there. And cause obviously our luggage was on that plane. It went on without us. And so we got to hang out in the airport for another, I don't know, like eight or nine hours. <laughs> um, so we just actually all the other people that missed their flights that I mentioned earlier, we all just met up basically had a lot of smoothies, had some pizza, some burgers, milkshakes. We just kind of had comfort food and took naps and then waited until like five o'clock that night. Different people took off at like maybe nine or 10. And then there was someone at like uh, 12 and then their flight got canceled again. And they took off at two and they actually left that time. And then we didn't take off until five. Then we drove, once we landed at the second airport, we picked up our luggage that had been waiting for us over in this little nook over to the side, grabbed our luggage, got the rental car, and then drove home through a snowstorm. I wish I could have been a little more helpful in this last video, but the three things, the three takeaways, okay? Just remember, passport control and customs. You go there first, okay? You get in line, you declare anything you have to declare. Then you go get your bags, you put them back on another conveyor belt once you go through customs. Then you just go through security. And then you just go find your gate. And hopefully it's not like, you know, a 30-minute process for you. I hope you have more time that you can just relax and go through that whole process on your way back home. But at least we made it back to America. And I cannot wait for the next trip to Israel. I am already planning on going back. So that's it for the flying side of things. But there's a lot more to come. There's a ton more that I really want to share with you that I, I'm going to be a little bit more informed on because it wasn't such a 30-minute blur. Um, so things like the cultural aspects of, of Israel, things like steps to prepare as your trip approaches, things about the money, that's that's kind of a, a headache in and of itself. But I'll, I'll give you some things that will really be helpful about that and uh, Jewish culture in general. So 
Hope these videos are a help to you and hope you continue to watch them. Thanks.